cook with me. We're back 842 with a special Easter edition of Today Food. Yeah, if you're out of ideas on what to serve your family, you have come to the right place this morning mm -hmm. because Laura Vitale is here. Laura Vitale from Laura in the Kitchen. She's got the perfect spread that will satisfy everyone in that hard to please, hard to please family. Uh, good to see you as always, Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like it's been so long. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you were here in person. What you making? <laughs> me what, too. What are we making this morning? So I wanted to make a, a brunch that I felt like was really easy, really versatile, but most importantly that you could prepare a lot of in advance the day before because I am not a fan of getting up at four o'clock in the morning to cook. So uh, we're going to make a beautiful vegetable quiche that I'm serving in a hash brown crust because Ooh. no one likes a soggy pie crust. Mm. And then as always, I have to have my Nana's Easter sweet bread for dunking into some coffee. And I always make some kind of tart because I feel like it's great to be eaten at room temperature. So I make my asparagus tart that I assembled the day before and I bake it last minute um, right before I serve it. So it's super easy and simple. But the quiche really is such a star here because it combines a frittata or like an egg, um, like an omelet, if you will. And hash browns all in one. So what I've done is I've taken some potatoes and you just want to grate them on a box grater really simply. And then once you have your potatoes all grated, you're going to dunk them into some water, which I know kind of looks really eerie. But the whole point here is to get rid of as much of the starch as possible. So then you squeeze them, you add them to a bowl. Pretend this is a full bowl of potatoes and to it, you'll add some grated onion and then you'll add salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil. And I like to cook mine in a nonstick skillet that's oven proof. Mm. And all you do is you pat it into your skillet that has a little bit of olive oil. You throw it in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. And now you've got something that looks like this. It's already partially See, cooked and it's nice and crispy. It's lovely. And then you just make a really simple custard of eggs. I have heavy cream, and then I just do salt and pepper. And this is the great thing. It's very versatile. If you don't want to do veggies, which I just have some simple spring sautéed vegetables like zucchini, mushrooms, and asparagus mm. that I just sautéed in salt and pepper and olive oil. If you didn't want to do that, I lost my whisk. If you didn't want to do that, you could do some crumbled bacon. You could do some mm. leftover sausage. Nice. You could do some ham if you wanted to. Very, very simple. So you beat your custard, you whisk the eggs, make sure it's all combined. You pour into your crust. I'm going to move my crust close to me so that you can see. Okay. Wait, so you pour Add it in there, but the crust, crust is already cooked, right? Yeah. It's half cooked. So half it's cooked. partially cooked. Ah. So it's going to get even more time in the oven. You top it with your desired vegetables. Like I said, you can do sausage. I've done this with leftover ham from Easter, which was great because a lot of times it's like you have Easter with one side of the family and then the next day you have Easter Monday with someone else. Um, so it's great. You've got leftover ham from Easter. You can add that right in here. And then you put your cheese on top. You throw the whole thing into the oven for 20 minutes and it comes out looking bronze and oh, gorgeous. What kind of like cheese do you use, one. Laura? What was that? I like a mixture. I like a mixture of Gruyere and cheddar. Mm. You could use either. You could use both. You could use whatever cheese you like. I think you need to use quite a strong cheese because this recipe itself is so simple that I feel like it could really handle something okay. pungent. Mm. But not everyone likes a really pungent cheese. So that's why I say you can just go with a sharp cheddar and you're fine. But really, the combination of the cheddar and the, the Gruyere just kind of gives you nuttiness and mm. it's so good. Mm. You never have to worry about a soggy crust. If you do plan on reheating it, the crust is actually going to just get crispier and crispier and crispier, which we love. And I mean, this to me is a perfect bunch a mimosa or two alongside <laughs> some fresh fruit and you are in business. Yeah. Um. Laura, that, that puff pastry you had with the asparagus, is, is that an easy thing to assemble? So it's so easy. So all I've done to my pastry chart here with asparagus, you take a sheet of puff pastry. I do it the night before. You lay it on top of parchment paper on a baking sheet. You spread a little bit of like a any kind of spreadable herby cheese that you like, um, an urban garlic. You could do a chive. You could do a little bit of ricotta if you want to. A little bit of, um, what is that cream cheese with um, 
I think it's like green onion cream cheese or something. Mm. Spread that on there, a little bit of parm, and then you put on your fresh asparagus. And again, a little bit more parm, a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper. And then I just put it in the fridge covered. And then in the next morning, I will brush the edges with a little bit of egg wash and I will pop it in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. And it is perfect every time. And it actually, I feel like by doing that, you're giving the puff pastry some time to really set in the fridge so that wow. when you do go to bake it, it kind of comes out perfect oh, every single torture. time. Laura, this looks so good. So good. Or we could know. just come right. to your house. Then, yeah. then we have it all Please. settled. Please. Laura, I am thank so you so much. to entertain. <laughs> Say the word. You can find the recipe and many others on our website at today.com slash food. Happy Easter, Laura. Easter eggs. What do you do with all those eggs you brought to die but then didn't? You eat them, of course. Uh, besides being our guest co-host, Brian Scott is also the executive chef and owner of Fintown in San Francisco, sharing an easy deviled egg recipe. All right, so what do you Anybody? Yes. This is what we're used to, cooking segments. Leave yes. me high and dry. Okay, all right. didn't, didn't see that. Okay. I just thought you were kind of like airing it out. Airing it out. <laughs> Nerves are done. So what we have here is my deviled egg recipe. Chanel approved. She's eaten so all good. of them Mine already. Gone. She's on to the second demo already. Oh, so wow. we have eggs, paprika, chives, hot sauce, spicy mustard, mayonnaise, salt, lemon juice, capers, and I'm sorry, my friend, I did turkey bacon today. <sighs> Please don't hate me. Are you, all right, we're still right. friends. What you do, Chanel, ready for this? I'm this ready. Is, this is cooking 101. This is how to get the eggs not to be have that little green ring oh, around yeah. the outside. Okay. And then where you can't peel them. So right. I came up with this foolproof method okay. from me. This pretend in TV world is boiling. Yes, it's a teaming. It's yes, what's it's boiling? You put your eggs in. Right. Now, Chanel just asked me, do they have to be at room temperature? I did. Egg? I asked you. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Do they have to be at room temperature? Thank you so much. Yes, they should, because <laughs> oh. that's going to take the chill off so they can okay. cook. Now, here's the trick. Right. These are boiling, right, guys? Yeah, boiling, Once boiling, they boiling. come to a boil, cook them for six minutes. Six, okay. okay. That's it? Then, that's it. Okay. Then turn them off and let them sit for six minutes in the same water. That's okay. 12 minutes. That's a 12-pack for some people. Okay. Okay? Brunch. All right. So then yeah. the next thing you do is you take ice. This uh -huh. is ice, Chanel. Okay. <laughs> that I know. All right. You put ice over the eggs. Let them sit for another six minutes. All right. 18 minutes, Mr. Roker. We are done. Okay. Now what you do is when your egg is chilled in the ice, take it over here on the board. Mm -hmm. And listen, here's the really cool thing. Take it. Smash it. See that? So I take it from well, here. Don't smash it. Don't smash it. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to break it. Go ahead, Al. Give it a little rolly roll. Don't smash it, Al. Just oh. roll it. Oh. <laughs> so, Al, here's a cool thing. Okay. A lot of people have trouble taking the shells off. Uh -huh. Put it back into the water mm -hmm. and watch this. If you can see, the water gets in around the egg when they're cooked cr uh, properly, and it grabs the shell and takes them off to where you have no shells. To, uh, it's not really working uh, that well. Uh, but that, that one's not I good. I it did. Uh, all right. Foolproof method, ladies and this gentlemen. This fool wrote that. So what you do now is you take the It does work, trust me. What you do is now you take the egg. Oh, come on. Be nice to me today. All right. So now you cut the egg in half. Right. If there's too many, you take your non-flavored dental floss. Sure. <laughs> oh, come on. Help me hold this side. Let's okay. get friends, okay? Okay. All right, and then you go here and you slicey slice oh. all the way through, and that way you can get a clean cut. Oh, very nice. Done. Oh, oh okay. people ah. like that. Okay. Ah, yeah. Thank you, you. You scoop out the, the yolk, right? Scoop out the yolk. That is no yolk. All right? So, <laughs> are you joking or not? you got to come out of your shell. <laughs> So what you do is now take mayonnaise. I'll add all this other good stuff. Okay, we got uh, all right. this Dijon, Dijon mustard. mustard. Dijon mustard. Okay. This is caper juice, the juice of caper berries. You want this. <laughs> that is the you key. Had to, you had to squeeze all those little capers. No. Lemon right. juice. And then hot sauce. Okay. Yes. So after you're done squeezing all the little capers, mm -hmm. you pulse this. And it will. <laughs> this, is, this is the best cooking segment, Al. Oh, there you go. Uh, Rock and roll, make this nice and smooth, okay. just like that. Right. Now you put them into a piping bag. I, I, okay. You have a star tip, I have a round tip. Now okay. watch this. What I did was, so they stick on the board. Go like here, put a little bit on the bottom, that way you can serve it. Oh. And watch this. Go up and up and up, and you're done. And you just Cute. fill those. Up and up and up. You take turkey bacon, nice. which Al likes. Watch this. I'm going to put extra up turkey bacon on his because this is his favorite. Up up chives up go on top of that. Look at you. You're up. a natural. So you take chives. You put them on top. You take a little turkey bacon. You put them on top. Oh. You did not just do that. That's good. It's good, you though, right? You did not. Uh, hold up. <laughs> so what? Yeah. But you see, now you got to talk. Ew. I'm not used to actually having to read the teleprompter, so this is now hard for it. Now I took another version of an egg. Right. Oh, that's really good. Roll out some biscuits, turkey bacon, Swiss chard, crack the egg on top, bake them. These are the canned biscuits so that good. you get in the can where you oh. bake these little turnovers for Easter the next That's day or the terrific. holiday or whatever it is. What They're done. Idea. And look on the inside. Here, try there. to eat the whole thing of that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Mm. Ryan, mm. thanks for all the Today Food recipes. Head to todayfood.com slash food.
We are back with a holiday edition of Superfood Friday. As so many of us get ready to celebrate Easter and Passover this weekend. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here sharing not one but two recipes to cover each holiday. Joy, good to see you. Happy, Have a good Passover. I know it's coming up. Oh, thanks so much, Alan. Yeah, we have two super fun, super yummy recipes. And I'm going to start with Easter. We are going to make these adorable Easter bunny egg cups. Ooh. And so the, the first thing I did, because I wanted to incorporate a lot of nutrition, mm -hmm. I sauteed some onion and bell pepper, nice. got them nice and soft and got a lot of the water out. And really, mm -hmm. you can use any veggies that you want. And if you have finicky eaters, you could skip the veggies as well. Then we let that cool and we make the egg mixture. Mm -hmm. So here I have a dozen eggs. I like to lighten it up. So I did a mix of eight whole large eggs mm -hmm. and four whites. But like, you know, everyone is the boss of their sauce and sure. they can use whatever combo that they want. To make that egg mixture extra creamy, a little bit of light sour cream okay. or Greek yogurt. And then whatever herbs you have in the fridge. I had some basil mm -hmm. and some salt and some pepper. Now I'm adding in all of those yummy veggies nice right into too. the mix. Yes, I call this nutrition confetti. <laughs> <laughs> Vitamin C, lots of flavor, antioxidants. And now, to cheese or not to cheese? I um, say cheese. Again, I say cheese too. Is there really an option here, Al? No. So I'm putting in some cheddar. And what I generally like to do, I'm going to put the whole thing in here, is mm -hmm. normally I would put half in and then I would leave half to put on the top. Mm -hmm. And then this would go, you have two options here. I'm going to move this over to the side. This would either go into your muffin tin right. and you could make perfect little Easter frittata muffins that'll be a short thing on your brunch spread or... Senior producer extraordinaire, Ali Markowitz, sent me this TikTok trend to try out to turn them into bunny shapes. And I think you're going to get a kick out of this. So basically what you do is you take, you, you put in your batter. And right. it's very important. I lined three paper liners because you need a lot of sturdiness. Okay. You take tin foil about an inch and a half across, six inches down. You smush them into little balls. And then after... The batter is already in. You see, I put a little bit of cheese on top. You're going to place three strategically at 12 o'clock, oh. then at 10 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock. And you pop these in the oven. Oh, I get 350. It. Yeah, just for about 20 Very to 25 cute. minutes. Al, these are so flippin' adorable. That's and then, great. so it comes out like this. And then what I've done is just for the decor, I used rosemary for little whiskers. Aww. I used a little piece of olive for the nose and That's then cute. sunflower seeds. Very nice. Isn't now that you've so got, cute? You've got uh, some matcha brie muffins. Matcha brie muffins. Bri, I'm sorry, so, brie. Ali Markowitz so just got in my ear and said brie. <laughs> so, so in my house, like my mom, we think she's world famous for her matcha brie. And matcha brie is basically... Um, fried matzah. You let matzah soak in egg and then uh -huh. you put all sorts of different mix-ins in and you fry it up like a great big pancake ah. on the skillet. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to make scrumptious muffins and these really hit the spot. I start with five pieces of whole wheat matzah. If you can't find whole wheat, you can go with the regular mm -hmm. white. And I basically crunch them and up. And these aren't egg matzahs. These are regular plain old matzah. Any matzah will work. Okay. Any matzah will work. Because then what I'm doing is you see that I'm crunching them here. And mm -hmm. what happens is the whole wheat brings the extra fiber. Right. And then I add a little bit of water on top and I let it soak yep. for about, see this, for okay. about two minutes. Then you want to drain it off. And now I'm adding in some egg. Yeah. I'm adding in a little bit of butter. If people want to skip the butter, you can use a neutral oil mm -hmm. like um, avocado oil or grapeseed oil. Now... I have loads of chopped apple because this is going to be a sweet oh, okay. cinnamony apple maple version. A little bit of maple syrup. We've got cinnamon because cinnamon makes everything a little bit better. Little and vanilla. some salt. Vanilla extract for the win. And then you mix this up, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Ow. Oh, my goodness. We cannot... 
get enough of these. And I also oh, have a savory that. version mm -hmm. that I'm going to show on Instagram. Joy, those great. look fantastic. Thanks so much. You have a great holiday. We can't wait to see you here in the studio. That's what we're looking forward okay. to. And I'm wishing everybody a wonderful, loving Easter and happy Passover. Thanks so much, Al. Okay, mm -hmm. take care, Love Joy. you.